What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of 100 Yards in Context. I'm joined by Cam, Daylin, and Hayden again today. Before we get started with the already, you know, uh, <laughs> fruitful conversations, how's everyone doing tonight? You know, been good. Just a long day, but excited to come out, come on here and, you know, chat with you guys a little bit. When are we getting new jerseys? EDC, do something, please. <laughs> Everybody's getting new jerseys but us. When could we get something? Sincerely, Cam. <laughs> says the, like, says the only guy on the platform who's got a team that's been to a championship game in their lifetime. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and ran the ball six times. That, yeah, that sounds tough. like a personal problem. I'd love to even get to a championship game. Just me personally. Yeah, just to lose? No, nah, I'd rather stay at home. Fuck. <laughs> yes. If you're not, if you're not just go, to lose? Yes, I would like to go. Yes. Nigga, if you if you're not gonna go all out, I don't give a fuck. Shit. One side of the, one <laughs> side of the team went all out. The other side did it. But well, that that's something we'll leave for another day. <laughs> Yeah, that's spot- Ooh, that's that's a nice spiral was type conversations, Cam. I was I was honestly gonna I was honestly gonna say some stupid ass high take that I don't believe in just to be fuck it. Um but then I found another No, one. So I'm I was interested now. Say it. Because I was gonna say I was gonna troll like, hey, Brian Thomas is better than Marvel Harrison Jr. That's what I was gonna say, but now fuck that. Now I see um Chris Sims will be wide receiver two on the Steelers with George Pickens. <laughs> Why are we doing this? 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 Bro, who said that? Dick eating, who said the that? Dick eating with no bib is who crazy. Who said it? This one who said Some it. Some random Steelers fans. Some random Steelers fans. They just on Twitter talking about some Justin Jefferson. Be wild this, 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 this is exactly why you can't give those black Dude. and gold losers any type of hope. <laughs> Dog, you can't even. Well, like, that type of shit you hear on Twitter, like I, it's so funny. I I've seen every single fan base rip on Justin Herbert, and then I've seen every single fan base pitch a trade scenario where they get him. It's like, Back. come on, dog. Like Ooh. I don't know. And Ooh. it's always underselling us. They're like, yeah, we'll give him a second and a fourth, and I'm like, <laughs> what? You said what? <laughs> Where's the rest? Where's the fourth first? You know what? You know what? Here's why I respect that. God. At least at least he's sticking to their guns like he's ass. He's ass enough for us, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like he's I, actually I'm sure he he better on our first. team. <laughs> no, no, bro. It's I don't know. Twitter, Twitter is the wild west nowadays. Like everybody yeah. has to take on everything and they're that, all that's, terrible. That's, that's why we no, get threads the like word. the little thread. That's the route running thread. You just have to enjoy and rejoice it because oh, that's in, the, in the next oh, hour, oh, you're going to oh, see somebody okay, say, talk about that. that route running thread is delicious. Oh, my God. I haven't uh, seen that I show. Could've, I could have went. Oh, it's fantastic. I could have waited for my time to go TV. No, I haven't. Oh, um, actually, I, I think I bookmarked it. Bro, I'm going to put it in the chat. Immediately. All right, bad, bad, bad. I'm pretty sure this one, this, one guy, this one guy, this one guy, he had posted some routes by Jamar Chase, and like some people were quoting it and saying he does, he's not really route running, like he's not separating. I'm like, do you not see the variance of these releases he's putting on niggas? Like, what are you talking about? Like, well, okay, he, he's literally he's literally cooking dudes off the line. Like they don't have a chance for the during the route because beat so bad off the line. Well, so there's that, and then people, like, always think that, like, route running means just, like, sharp cuts or, like, you know, juking people out type shit. But, like, honestly, route running is more about, like you said, your release. Like, are you getting, are you widening them out so you can attack the middle of the field? Like, are you attacking blind spots? Like, it's a lot more mental than people think, and that's why, like... Dudes like Keenan Allen can can be old and still just route people up. And, you know, it's why dudes like, for instance, like Julio Jones, like don't translate as well when they get older because they can't just out physical, out athlete people anymore. Well, hey, brother, Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen looks like he runs a, a five nine forty and he's he, he, 
baking teams. Goodness he, gracious. Yeah, he does. He runs like a four yeah. seven or something. Like that's he, horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it, oh, it's lied. horrendous, but that's believe. Hey, I, 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 I know, hey, right? I see, I see him go one way, the defender going the other. Yeah, dude, you, it's just it's all a head game. Like you just play with the the cornerback the entire game. Like him, Devontae Adams, like yeah. those are guys. Like specifically Devontae Adams and Keenan Allen, they've been in this conversation for close to ten years, at least being yeah. top ten when they're running. Like yeah. Keenan Allen for sure has been way more underrated in that talk, but I was always been like, look, man, Keenan Allen is good. Like when he's healthy. Fun. I feel like that's a good natural segue into into talking about the Keenan Allen yeah, that's trade a little bit. That's actually what um, I was gonna bring it up. Bears. I was actually gonna bring up Dumb Bears. Dumb Bears. Dumb Bears. Dumb Bears. All I'm I was say actually is literally gonna say that. Take... So no, go ahead. Go ahead. He better he better he better take thirteen from Caleb Williams. <laughs> well no. <laughs> um but nah, that's so, honestly um like People are making it out to be like um, he sh- he said like someone's a bad guy. In reality, like it's very clear that the new def- or the new um, front office really really valued the defensive line and DN specifically. And I mean, if you look at this draft class, like obviously you're not drafting someone to immediately replace Keenan Allen because that's just silly. But if you look at this draft class, like objectively the wide receivers are a much better group than the DNs. And so like Keenan didn't want to budge off his number and that's fair. He had a career season at an older age and, you know, he doesn't have many opportunities to get paid again. So like, I'm at just, it wasn't, it didn't offer or interest in the line. We couldn't get it worked out. And I wish him the best. It is a little heartbreaking, but I'm glad he went to the NFC so I can at least still root for him. Hey, it'd be like that. I'm telling you. Yeah, man, I was going like to go ahead and ask. At least, yes. at least y'all respect him on like, on like a certain team who uh, didn't respect the receiver, gave him up for a fifth round pick for no reason, by the way. No reason. Just to pay a receiver off ACL. But I guess uh, I, you know. there was a reason. To pay the receiver, the worst receiver off an ACL? No, he didn't do whatever it took to win. Yeah. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? You, what? What do you mean? You mean getting a vaccine for a, a disease don't even exist anymore? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> God, hey man, hey man, you should have won. You got to get back on the field, bro. If I give you heroin and it's going to get you on the field faster, you better take it. Oh, and so because we had we had some major trades go down since we. Last, you know, spoke. So we had the King Allen yeah. trade to the Bears. Then the Bears, a few it days ha- later, it decided. Happened what, like, it, only, it only happened, what, like an hour after we got done recording? Literally an hour. Like, yeah, literally, literally an hour after. Literally. literally. That episode. That was hilarious. I, I sat down to, like, watch TV, and my phone starts blowing up. My Twitter group start blowing up. And then you guys go, hey, dude. And I'm like, the f- Fuck just happened. <laughs> he fell down to his knees, yeah. man. He said, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Okay. Um, okay. And then the Bears, so, the Bears traded uh their former franchise quarterback, Justin Fields, to the Steelers. So my question is with the trades of, you know, I don't know if we talked about the Minnesota trade last episode. Well, I guess we can talk no, about that. I, I, think, I think that happened. That didn't happen until afterwards, actually. Yeah, that happened like a few days ago. Yeah, all the trades that happened since we've been gone it was um, the two trades. Y- well, the three I just mentioned: Sam Howell is a mm-hmm. Seahawk, and then uh, Pickett is now an Eagle. So I, yeah. I forgot about Sam Howell. God, fool. Yeah, I, no, I mean that. I mean, we don't, honestly, we don't, really, we don't really have to talk about Sam Howell. We don't. That that's okay. Wow. That was hey man, they're building but, a they're building a, um, a QB room up there. They, yeah, yeah. Respect. They, they have they have people. Sam Howell, Gino, and they're reportedly interested in Michael Penix. Yeah, that's a great room. I mean, Bro, sure. what, I never said it was great. It's just a room. It's a room out of, room. Out of all the teams. It cer- certainly is one that's of a, them. That's a fantastic room. Best quarterback room in the league. Oh uh, lord. Uh, now boys uh, have a pretty good room too. Then. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of star power. 
Dude. Um, okay, yeah. Because I think it really affects the draft. Like, it it really I, affects the draft. So, the Steelers are now well, out of quarterback contention, essentially. Um, yep. As far as, like, the top guys. They could probably take, like, a Spencer Rattler later or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Minnesota they never gonna trade is now anyway, firmly so. in the driver's seat to trade up because they have now pick yeah. 11 and they have pick 23 from Houston. So now they have, yeah. in, in most people's minds, the ammunition to put a package together to go up. So I guess the first question for this episode of the pod is, with all the movement going on as far as quarterbacks now around the league, which team do you feel, you know, based through fragrances so far, is best set up, you know, to, you know, have success, you know, drafting their quarterback of the future? And which team do you feel like kind of botched this? you know, through the frequency process and really have to, you know, clean it up during the draft. Who, who is Minnesota's backup QB? Is it? I, I think I Sam I Donald. They and they 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 was Sam, Sam Donald, Donald, I believe, is their only quarterback. And, okay. Um, they lost. What's they still kept Odu. They still kept uh, the dude from Jared BYU. Hall. Jared, yeah, Hall. Jared Hall. Jared okay, Hall. so they have, okay. So, oh, yeah, Jared okay. Hall's in the country. Okay. Okay, well then, honestly, like I think the Vikings. If you, if I'm a QB, like, like yes, the Vikings are not in a position currently to go get a QB, but like you said, they're in the driver's seat, and I, I don't know. Like I, I think that if I'm a young quarterback, like out of all the teams that are up there potentially looking to get get someone, um, I think that that's the that's the place I want to go. Like they shit, man, they have like a decent running back in Aaron Jones. They have two really good receivers, assuming they keep Jettas. Um, but you know, it's like, it just feels like a more complete squad to like have a rookie QB. And you know what, even with Sam Darnold, like that's a decent backup. Like that is not a bad backup quarterback. So I think they would it for my on on in my opinion. No, nah, I I mean I feel like there's no better answer than the Vikings. The Vikings, I mean, again, you have Jettas, you have Hawkinson, you picked up Aaron Jones during free agency, you have, you know, another young receiver in Addison. Like they have quality, they have a quality enough offense to to help a young quarterback succeed. And with them having eleven and twenty three, I don't know necessarily how far they can get up for a quarterback, but like if you want it like a Hypothetically speaking, let's say they go get J.J. McCarthy, you know, um, Mr., you know, he's already a guy that basically kind of had everything easy for him in Michigan with running the ball, you know, it makes it a lot easier for him in the league because you got arguably the best receiver, you got a top three tight end, uh, the offensive line's not terrible, Aaron Jones is a quality running back, like, it's all right, they'll they'll be all right, they'll be fine. Uh, well, Obviously, I'm not gonna beat the dead horse. You know, like mm-hmm. y'all, y'all said, we already said. I'm gonna go the other way and talk about probably who I feel is gonna be the odd man out. I mean, obviously the Bears. I mean, I, I would assume y'all are taking Caleb's. Uh, I mean, depending on if the Vikings trade with Washington or not, yeah, I don't know. So I'm not gonna throw them in there. I've heard, I've heard them also flirting with New England. Um getting up the three but as far as teams that i really feel like need one and i don't think they're just going to be in a predicament to be able to get one uh so my the way i'm looking at it is i'd rather so we all know that being middle of the road is basically a depth sentence yeah it is what it is either your ass or you're great there's no in between because being in between is the worst thing you can do. Being mid is the worst thing possible for you. So I kind of do look at a team like Seattle, who, yeah, you pay Gino, but he, obviously he's not the future. He was older when y'all threw him that money. Because, yeah, even though between Seattle and New Orleans, I'm looking at it like that, I don't see New Orleans moving off from Derek Carr. I feel like they're going to give him another swing on another year. And it just is what it is. It is. No, trust me. No, no Saints fan. (laughs) No, no, I've not seen a single Saints fan sing the praises of Derek Carr. They've all shit on him (laughs) on astronomical levels. 
So it's just like it's tough. So if I had to do, if I had to look at it that way, actually, not fuck it. I'm gonna switch it. It's actually gonna be the Saints because at least, at least Seattle had the backup contingency of Sam Howell, who yeah, he didn't look good, but I don't think I don't think he just dead ass just unplayable. He's he's a he's more of a backup right now, which we we talked about this throughout the season on Sunday Spiral. You have to have a competent backup quarterback now in the league. You yeah, just have man. to. These how quarterbacks are getting hurt. Quarterbacks played this year when it like it was like seventy something. Yeah. I think I saw crazy. It was though. like yeah, it was like seventy. So you just have to have contingencies in place for if your if your star QB may have to miss two three games because yeah, those two three games can mean a lot if you're in a competitive division. I mean, you saw it with us for the last two years before this last season with Lamar. Lamar missed more than four games, and we missed the playoffs in one year, and then we snuck in just to lose in the uh, in the wild card. So stuff like that matters a lot. And so for the Saints I, at fourteen, I don't think they're gonna be in a position to move up and try to take anybody. They're not gonna do it. So they're stuck with Derek Carr. They're just hoping like, hey man. Just, just right the ship when we know they're probably not. They'll probably be mid next year unless they just say fuck it and actually tank. It's yeah. I, I think they need to honestly because the the Saints have been kicking the can down the road about these contracts for a long time, dude. They're gonna be absolutely. paying people who are watching their games from the couch because they're retired. Like yeah, like it's it's kind of ridiculous. Like at this point, if you're a Saints fan. You are guaranteed, or like, not guaranteed, nothing's guaranteed, but like, for me, when I look at the Saints, like, you are right in that purgatory that we were talking about. Like, that is the worst place to be because you're not gonna ever be a, like bad enough to really get a good, like, game changing players. You're never gonna be good enough to like make a difference in the postseason, or, you know, you kind of just, kind of just strikes me as like a six to eight win squad pretty consistently. Um, but I, they just need to fit. They just need to figure out their contract situation. But the one that you brought up that Cam, that I really liked Seattle, that would be a dark horse that I 100% could see jumping up. Because, oh, yeah. Like I, I hadn't even thought yeah, about it. They were interested in Anthony Richardson last year, but they didn't want to, they didn't oh. want to pull the trigger. So, you know, I mean, I mean, yeah, completely, completely understand that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just yeah. think, um, I don't know. Yeah, that would make sense. They're not far enough back. They could, you know, package a future first potentially. But you know, I, I'm really interested to see how this QB class pans out. Because the other thing with the Saints too, before we get off of this topic, yeah. they fucking suck at drafting in the first round. <laughs> like let's just be honest. They Mark can't Davenport, draft in the first Peyton round Turner. to save hey, their hey, lives. Hey, two hey, two firsts for Marcus Davenport. Got oh. oh. gotta, gotta bring that back up. They they two firsts two first for him. Well they, I, they I, I, for, I forgot they, they traded, traded him. A, yeah, they a traded future up. first for him. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it wasn't two first well, two first total, but yeah, they basically spent two firsts on him. Like out of the last yep. Couple, at least from 2015, from that list I saw, the only two first rounders that were worth a damn for them are Marshawn Lattimore and Alave. Yeah, and those Marshawn, two, Marshawn is always hurt, brother. He is always hurt until it's oh. time to play Mike Evans. What do you until mean? Until it's time to play Mike <laughs> Evans. Until it's time to play Coach Mike Evans. Healthy, you know. Literally, <laughs> literally, his body just comes back. It bounces back out of pure hatred and spite. He's I, like, I'm fine. Just I'm sure it's, like, it's it's like you just walking around. It's like you're your mind. You're like this nigga think I'm a hoe. I ain't no hoe. He just he's, <laughs> he's like limping around. He's got crutches. He's like, oh, we play the Bucks this week. He like throws them down. He's like walking normal. He's like, I'm fine. He said, like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah that, I mean, I've never I seen a man genuinely hit somebody that badly. Like, oh, oh my god. god. He's just like, give me the tour doll, bro. Give me the tour doll. <laughs> dude, we got this. Nah, dude, I, I, I gotta, think Marshawn Lattimore listens to hit him up by Tupac before every time he plays. Like, 
Mike Evans Facts, because he just bro. he he just he just plays with like a different tenacity. Like there's no way he doesn't listen to like some kind of like classic rap disc before he plays that man. Like yeah, it's just, just nuts. It, like, it's just nuts to have that much intensity for one player, one receiver. Like it's crazy. Dude, that's like one of my favorite things that I feel like doesn't really happen anymore is like well, it does still, but not as much as like older NFL is when um there's just like a really nasty like cornerback and wide receiver like rivalry. Uh yeah. I mean the it's not cornerback, but like Derwin James like hates Travis Kelsey with a passion. And so that one's always fun to watch. Um but it it's it's one of those it's yeah, it's just one of those ones that you see like a Lattimore and Evans matchup and you're like, yeah, that one's that's just fun. That's just fun. Yeah, it it, it does some yeah, like, I think I think it's it a, lot, a lot that goes into that. Uh I was just oh, gonna say bad. I think it's a lot that goes into that, mainly because, you know, a lot of these guys are now friends now. See back in the day, yeah. like these players like actually didn't like each other on the field or off the field. Now everybody's friends. Everybody trains 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 together. You know. Yeah, so. that's very true. Yeah. I mean, so I it, yeah, it could it could go either way, but I still I still love seeing the rivalries at the end of the day. It, I'm not saying like we had we like they has to be in the game because they don't because yeah there's there you have situations like yeah we're we're talking about Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore they got into a scrum like a like not too long ago but then you also have a situation where it can be Josh Norman or OBJ and that shit could just go yeah that one completely was, left that was not okay like that that was so crazy like, like it just it was so random too it was just like dude like, all right. Yeah, just like head spears him out of nowhere. Like, it's crazy that like people don't really talk about that as much because that's like pretty ridiculous if you think could've about it. He could have broke his jaw, could have fucked up his he neck, like, broke his own a neck. lot of ways. He could have exactly. Like, I don't, dude. It's so it's it's definitely slept on. Um, actually, going on to the next topic, still kind of talking about receivers. Um, it was something like Artie asked about. He asked. He asked this to me while we was on the phone earlier mm -hmm. talking about discussions. He was. It was. It's a small, short question, but he was like, "Um, because of how many receivers are coming out on a consistent basis, do you feel?" Um, he didn't ask this, but like it was from the. What, what were you watching when when you heard that question? I'm or not giving out free clout, but it was from a very, very popular uh, media analyst, Rob Receiver Rankings. Yeah, so he was like, he was basically he saying that. He posed the question to his co-host. Yeah, he was basically like, do you feel that uh, the wide receiver market is going to deteriorate due to uh, the amount of talent that's been coming out basically for like, what, the past five years now at this point? I mean, I... I could definitely see it. It's it, yes, because what'll happen is you'll end up getting like yes, if you like like the Chiefs did. If you try trade a Tyree Kill, you're not going to get a Tyree Kill. Like you trade a Keenan Allen, you're not going to get a Keenan Allen. But you can get someone to replace eighty percent of his production. And if you get, you know, and shit, you get an extra pick here or there just for an extra dart throw, like. Like, I don't know, receiver's just one of those positions that, and all positions are like this, but there's, like, dudes in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round can just absolutely be game-changing players because they maybe don't have any of the, you know, they don't have the size, speed, athleticism, you know, they don't have the RAS score that you'd like, but they're just good receivers like going back to Keenan Allen he was a third round pick um but he was supposed to be drafted higher but he ran a 4-7 in the combine I believe and so that tanked his stock and then now he's a dog but it's like it's one of those things um I think it will deteriorate the market a little bit but at the end of the day you're never gonna like replace like truly replace those game-changing players with like random dudes you know what i mean 
to to kind of piggyback off that, the, I wouldn't say the market necessarily is going to deteriorate itself because I think it's shown prevalence that like for the past couple of years, the market has basically it's basically tiered itself. Essentially, is what it's done. So like you got your wide receiver ones, like your bona fide game changers. I thought did Kane, the big bucks. Devontae's making thirty. Tyreek's making like thirty, thirty one ish. Like I forget who else is below them. But, you know they're making like twenty nine, twenty eight. Like Keenan's making thirty two. Lamb are obviously yeah. Jettas and Lamb they're up next. They're gonna make about twenty nine and thirty ish million. Those dudes are like the game changers. Or those are the big money dudes. Then you got like your tier two of receivers. They're making like. 25 to like 20 where it's like maybe it's older players that were like once good but now they're falling off like a digs or you got you know like kind of like your high end too yeah i know t higgins is on a tag but he's making like 20 you know he makes 20 on like a tag or something like that then you got your you know your tier three receivers where it's like we kind of just paid you just to pay you you you're, you're christian kirks your gabe right. davis is like those guys like Essentially, the receivers being "quote unquote" replaceable has has it's essentially helped guys. Like it's done the opposite. It, it, it hasn't necessarily hurt the top guys. It's more helped guys like Gabe Davis and Christian Kirk get paid because teams are like, you know what? We don't really want to draft one. We know what you are. We can take you and get you in a different system, acclimate you, and we can use your talents and get you seven to about a thousand yards. We can get you about seven hundred to a thousand. So that's really all we need out of a receiver, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily deteriorating it, but it's definitely separated itself. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I basically agree. What I said already was I was like, look, as long as we are still in this passing league, I just don't see that happening, in my opinion. If you're still gonna have such an over reliance on wide receivers, you think you think these agents are gonna be like? Oh, well, you had however many percentage of the snaps. You accounted for this percentage of the yards on the offense. That it, like, they're like, they're going to use this in negotiation. And so, and then look at even, even Calvin Ridley. Like, I don't think Calvin Ridley's a bad receiver while I'm saying this. But Calvin Ridley got paid a pretty penny. He like missed 29. A year. He, he missed a year. Yeah, he missed, he missed. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Or did he say two? I don't know. I think he said two. I don't remember. But he missed the whole year, which I do understand. So he's still kind of relatively fresh, healed from some of the other ailments he had uh, when he was in Atlanta. But as far as, like, if you're going to keep over utilizing these receivers, it just is what it is. You're going to, like, even though the Chiefs won a Super Bowl this past year, they're going to take a receiver high. Yeah. And so they won a Super Bowl because of that defense. And it, it's still going to be important for Andy Reid to be like, okay, yeah, we won this way, but I don't like it. You know what I mean? I still want to have my fucking weapons. I still want a deep threat. Yes, they signed Hollywood Brown, but they still are going to take another receiver because, yeah, Rasheed Rice isn't a deep threat. He's not. That's the, you know, that's the rat guy, and they're fine with that because he did a damn good job in that role. But when you have situations like that, it's just going to be like, ah, yeah, you got to do something. And then even on the other end, look at the Bills. They're like, fuck it. We got to let Gabe Davis walk. We're going to have to give Khalil Shakir more, uh, like some more touches. I know they signed Curtis Samuel, but That's I'm sure they're going to take one. If, if, they, if they keep Diggs and he's stopped doing the annual summer shenanigans of being bored oh, and just chilling rumors. It's like the, I'm like, so unhappy. Like Show me attention. Show me attention. Exactly. I'm bored. He's like, uh, I just don't get it. Uh, I'm gonna uh, literally. You guys me. don't get how hard it is being me. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers does he's the, the same. He's the he's NFL old. player. He's the NFL player king of engagement for me. That dude will just send like a three uh, word tweet. And get like thousands and thousands of views for no reason. Not even just that. He'll just change his bio. It'll be like it'll have Buffalo the whole year. Buffalo gone. And then he'll change the location of in my mind. Like, <laughs> like God, God, that's bro. hysterical. That's like, hysterical. Come on, man. Um, yeah, like I it, it, 
as as long as they keep valuing this position where they keep valuing, I just don't see it dropping. So like the example I used with Artie was like, uh, you know, during a time when running backs are running the league, they normally had bigger portions of the salary. Receivers were getting their money, but running backs was looked at more valuable than receivers at that time. So yeah. that's kind of the way I looked at it then. And then I also brought up the fact that you know who else is gonna be happy about this hike? Corners. Oh yeah, yeah. hundred thousand percent. <laughs> yeah, once this rises, it's like huh, we got to rise too. We got to stop these guys. So because again, one corner, hand corners is the second the hardest position to play. Oh, without and a doubt. Let let alone let alone you got to find somebody that can like shut down these elite guys. There's not very many. That's all I said. There's not very many. Right, the dude, rules are in not. their favor too. Like you yeah, know. Nah. Um, let me yeah, let me revise. Not like just clarify my point to kind of piggyback off Dalen's point um, about the like, tier system. I think with all of the dudes coming into the league, like all of the talent, all of the draft draftable dudes coming into the league and how it's kind of progressing that way, I think that the tiers are going to get more distinct. So you'll have the bona fide wide receiver ones and they'll start making even more money. Like, you know, oh yeah, for Marvin sure. Harrison Jr. Like, like, just pretend he goes out there and is exactly the pro everybody thinks he is. His next contract's going to be like forty mil, ah, easily. So that's <laughs> just one of those things. It's it's as more people get into the league, it's gonna it, the tier system is just gonna get more strict. You know, no, I definitely will. So I will definitely agree with that because yeah, shit is shit is definitely gonna get spooky. Uh I mean not if you're an agent. No, dude, if you're an agent, you're, you're feeling corner. yourself right now. You're, you're having so much agent, fun, oh, but... oh my god. Oh my god. But it's it's the thing that I'm gonna be most interested in seeing is how the league is gonna try to correct itself. That's my fa- that's my favorite thing to always see when it's like mm, we feel like some of these guys are making too much money and it's like well, you gave them the contract. Like, what do you mean? So, okay. it's going to be fun to see how, like, ah, nah, we're not going to pay him this. We don't think he's worth that. I mean, it kind of happened, like, that season. I think it was, yeah, the season after everybody got traded, Devontae got traded, Tyreek got traded. And, like, all the, I think that, that next offseason, like, motherfuckers were trying to get that bag, and they were just like, nah, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to pay you that much, bro. And receivers was kind of like, I guess. So it's always interesting to see how they're going to try to curb that. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's a really good question to bring up, though. I like that one. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Any any other news y'all saw that y'all want to talk about Any in the football world? Um, I, had another, I had another question. Um, shoot. So when it comes to consensus boards, right, a lot of people, you know, try to justify or disqualify <laughs> people's rankings based on the consensus, you know, board. So my question is, does the consensus board truly accurately display how good a player is? Because I feel like the consensus board is tailored to certain media outlets certain, you know, evaluators, whether they're certain, you know, YouTubers or whatever. So my question basically is, do does the consensus media board serve as a consensus for you? And I'll start. I don't I don't think it's really a consensus. I think it's more a collection of data from other people, other like minded people. Like I remember I'm in another group chat uh, where we talk about a little bit of draft coverage and content. And I got into an argument with someone who basically told me that I'm too low on Xavier Worthy because of the consensus big board. Consensus big board had him at 32. So if I had him any lower than 32, in his words, I don't know ball. My response to that oh, was, damn, I guess I don't know ball. I guess My I response know. to that was, I guess I know ball. He probably got another. We'll, we'll yeah. get into it. My response yeah. to that was one: you can't tell me I don't know ball when all I do is watch film all day. So that's one. 
Two, just because Xavier Worthy is not a top 32 player for me does not mean that I don't still enjoy Xavier Worthy. I think a lot of people have gotten so caught up in where players are ranked. This is also sounding very hypocritical coming from me because I was just venting today about rankings. But mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people have gotten so concerned on where players are ranked and not the actual analysis behind them. For example, Xavier Worthy, spoiler alert for next week or whenever we decide to record this, Xavier Worthy currently is not one of my top 10 wide receivers in this class. That does not mean that I don't think Xavier Worthy is a great player. It's just that in a class full of wide receivers, I don't have him as my 10th best right now. To some people, that'll be like, okay, cool. He has an educated opinion. I respect that. Somebody else hears that. They're ready to blow up my, my Twitter and, and call me names and say I don't know ball. So that's what I have to say about it. But for you guys, like, how do you feel about, you know, the whole consensus big board thing and how it relates to how people see players? Yeah, I yeah, I got some. Yeah, I got something on this. So essentially, kind of very much on your vibe. I mean, you could probably tell how we all felt just based on our reaction, our general groans when you were like, first of all, you said, I don't know ball. So I don't know. I am, I am, I think there's way too much group think in, in like the scouting and the draft community. I mean, obviously, you know, the teams are all different, but like all of the more casual, like I say casual in quotes, cause we're, you know, not with a, you know, an NFL organization, but all of the more quote unquote casual draft analysis fans and and people who engage with that community like um I, if you like there's too much group think everybody's like oh yeah marvin harrison jr has to be wide receiver one no matter what and it's like i welcome other opinions i welcome other opinions as long as you have something to back that up like if you're saying yeah i value xavier worthy speed so i have him as wide receiver seven you know what that's fucking great you have a you have a reason and I understand that. So it's like, there's those people. And that's like the, the group that I like to engage with because you can actually talk to them and, and they know what they're talking about. They want to engage as well. And then you have the group who are just like, who just, they only see what they only see media. They're only on Twitter and they only, they, they don't really dive into it or explore it all that much. They just kind of, they just see like it's the same group that thought Quentin Johnston was going to be a like Devontae Adams last year. Whoa, it's like hey. people buy into the to to the media and the draft hype and all that shit, and then they base their opinions solely on that, and that's what I don't like. So it's like I don't know. So to sum it up, rank people however you want. Just have a reason to why you're doing it, and I'm cool. Listen, he he made <laughs> excellent, beautiful points. Jesus Christ, excellent points. So I'm gonna split my answer into two a little bit. There is a lot of group thing, as Hayden said. There's a lot of group thing. There's too much like, oh, I see this, so it's got to be true. It's that's not all the way true. The thing about scouting is you have to be able to trust your eyes and trust what you believe, trust what you see. If you don't, you have to be able to trust what you see. So if you see, you know, hey, he, I really like the way he gets off the ball, or I don't like the way he gets off the press, I don't like the way his back pedal looks, you write that down. Write that down. Say that. Do whatever. Hey, I don't like the way he punches. I don't like the way, you know, he read this play a little wrong. You know, he didn't read this coverage correctly. If that's how you see it, that's how you see it. Somebody else might see it different. That's the whole point of scouting. Everybody's going to see shit differently. Literally. Take some notes. Everybody's going to see shit differently. Shit, Hayden might see, you know, hey, this D tackle, he punches hands real, real good. I'm gonna be like, you know what? I don't really like the way he punches hands, but it's fine. That's okay. Shit like that happens. But the thing is, we got uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum, do not try to be different. Don't say Javon Baker is wide receiver one and he's better than Marvin Harrison Jr. Don't do that because that's not true. That's not even the slightest bit of truth. There is no educated opinion that can tell me otherwise. That's just not true. Don't go for the takey takes just so you can be popular and be like, I was right. 
No, because 80% of the time, you look dumb. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stick to your guns. Stick to what you like. For example, Hayden brought up receivers. I, watching receivers, I'm more of a defensive guy, but watching receivers, I prefer route runners. I prefer the guys that can separate and that can run routes over the 50-50 guys, over the speedy guy. It's just my personal preference. So I'm always going to have a route runner above maybe a 50-50 guy. So, like, again, for my example, I'm not saying that I, I obviously have Marvin one, but I do like neighbors more than I like Marvin. I like neighbors' ability to separate. And I like neighbors more than I like Rome. But those two are super duper dumb close. Like odds you can damn near flip a coin. But I like neighbors more than I like Harrison, more than I like Rome. That's okay. That's fine. That's my preference. Just be I, I can give you an educated guess. I can give you or I can give you an educated reason. And I'd say, hey, that's just my preference. I just think rock runners in the league are more valuable than any 50-50 guy, any speed guy. I don't care. I don't care about that. Just like somebody can say, speed guys are more valuable than route runners. Speed guys are more valuable than 50-50 guys. That's fine. That's okay. Just come with a little bit of education. Come respectful. Come with education, and we'd be good. I'll, I'll gladly talk about it and tell you why you're wrong, but I'm going to gladly talk about it. <laughs> and, like, another thing, too, is when it comes to these positions, I think a lot of people forget there's there's plenty of ways to win. Like, yeah, there are certain receivers that are in the league, yeah, they're not the best route runners, but they still win. Yeah. You know? Without a doubt. Like, there are plenty of receivers who aren't the fastest, but they still win. So there's different ways to win, and there's different ways that coaches coach. So some people, some coaches may prefer that. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Earlier, I was watching Austin Booker because I finally got some more tape on him. And when it comes to him, I don't necessarily think it's more of an indicative on him, but that's another thing with film too, guys. Some of these players are asked to do things for their system. So there are times, especially Big 12, there are times where you think you're like, all right, this is a clear pass down. Let let him go, and he's and at like he's literally tag. just read exactly yeah. two tech stand to react or they got like a three punch. three fucking thing. He's a two tech, and it's like no, 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 no. He's exactly. a yeah. stand down, <laughs> let him go, stand up, bye. I'm just like listen, what? brother. That it just itches my soul because every time it brings me back to 2020, evaluating Neville Gallimore. If I see this Oklahoma defense stunt one more time, yes. I'm going to punch my computer. Because why is he stunting on second and two? That's what are we so doing? Dude, I see gotta him going from front side B gap to backside C gap. For what? Hey, man, you what know what? Doing? <laughs> Sometimes you got to catch him off guard and give him a wide open first down. You know? Exactly, man. And Jesus like, and give it away for three yards at this point. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, that's like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, perfect example. Like, I, I, even though I marked the play down because I did like the play he made on it, there was a play where he, I believe, Austin Booker is the far side end. The ball gets hiked. You know what I mean? He fakes like he's rushing. He backs up. He's in the middle of the field by then. Because he's supposed to be a spy, basically. Gross. They wanted him to be a spy. Luckily, they had ran like an RPO or some shit like that. And um, I think it was against UCF. Dude caught the ball. He caught it. He tried to make a move. Austin Booker's teammate rallied to him. He didn't get him with the initial tackle, but he stumbled him enough. And Austin Booker came and just cleaned him. He cleaned him up. That's all. Like, it was a great play. Oh yeah, it's always and like and that's another thing. Like he moves good in space too, like because he's gigantic. He's like six 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 five, so he's gigantic and he moves well in space. But just the fact of seeing that, it's just like, uh, I just want to, I just want y'all to let him go, like let him, let him run his race because I can, I see plays of him. He comes out with like it's literally about third quarter in the game. He whoops out a spin move, and I'm like, ooh. You had that in your repertoire the whole time, and it's not even like, oh, well, he just did it just to do it. No, he clearly practiced and works on this. Hey, I'm telling you, these these, these coaches, these these defensive coaches in college, they, they 
You want to talk about women that don't know ball? They really don't. Uh, yeah. Maybe set these players up for failure day one. Like, like it's I said, so just evaluating sometimes. regular, regular defense and tackles and stuff like Mike. Also, Dizua coming out was like six foot. I like 260, 270, 280, somewhere around that mark. He was little. He was little as hell. But, you know, he was a wrestler. He had good core strength. He just had all of it. So it was like, you can tell, this dude going to be a damn good three tech. He's playing zero, one, five. He's playing everywhere. Barely plays any three tech, by the way. He's just playing nose. Like, I see him playing so much nose. What are you doing? Levi Uzurike. He was, you know, smaller character, quick. Played nose. Played nose at Washington. Why are you playing him at nose? Why are you playing him in those? What are we doing? What are we doing here? That's why, like, I value the the Nick Sabans of the world to be able to, you know, maximize. He knows what he has, and he's like, you know what? Instead of me being stupid, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna play this weird system where I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell uh uh uh, uh, uh my my I'm gonna tell Quentin Williams to to drop back and be a spy. No, I'm telling Quentin Williams go 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 get the quarterback. Go get the quarterback. <laughs> I'm going to go play man coverage because that's what Patrick Trutan, Trayvon Diggs, and them are good at. I'm going to play man coverage again because that's what Terry and Arnold and Kool-Aid McKinstry are good at. I'm going to tell Minka Fitzpatrick he can play corner, safety, slot, and backer all at the same time because guess what? That is the type of player he is. He's a damn good player. And exactly. he can do that. Exactly. That's what I love to see. I love to see the defensive minds that know how to maximize their players and not just do whatever. I just it gets on my nerves when they just oh oh it's, it's so irritating. I like that, that's why I tell these young kids like, all right, bro, you gonna play at the next level? If you're gonna go somewhere and there's like three options, and two out of those options don't even use you the way you're supposed to be used. Why are you going somewhere where you're already at a distinct disadvantage? Go somewhere where you already like this is this is something. All right, if you're a good, if you're like, if I'm a corner, if I'm a great man corner, but I can still work on my zone stuff, I'm not going to a place where they're running eighty percent zone. I'm going to a place where you set yourself good, up for I know failure. I'm, exactly, I know I'm good in press. I know I'm good at off man. I know I'm good in. You know what I mean? I know I'm good when it comes to me being able to make a read and react to the ball, stuff like that. If I know that that's my best strong suit, I'm not going to a fucking Pac-12 team that runs nothing but zone. I'm Can't just do. not doing that. I'm not setting myself up for that. Can't so do. that's another thing I say. These young kids, go where you're going to get utilized best. Because if, if you don't know what you're the best at, Oh yeah, you're gonna get taken advantage of. Sure. Now, granted, you could you could hope that somebody's gonna draft you, be like, you know what? I'm gonna get this guy. He's gonna come into my system, and we're gonna be Gucci. Cause that's what I think is gonna happen with a guy like Austin Booker. The same way how that happened with Will McDonald last year. A lot of people didn't have Will McDonald going that high because they didn't, you know, they didn't really get to see much from him on his tape because he's wide nine, he's a five. <laughs> Like he's he's running in these nasty odd fronts that somebody was like, you know what? If this kid just has to rush and just go, not have to worry about reading and reacting, catching blocks. If he doesn't have to worry about that, I think I could work something with him. And that's the type of stuff you want to see. That's the type of stuff you want to see. So yes, I think that's another thing fans that understand. Especially when it comes to your team, too. You should know what your team is good at. So don't be trying to be like, oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to get I'm trying to get this dude who's a receiver where I, my team, we run these deep intricate in breaking routes and he's not a good route runner. Oh, like you, you have to know what your team is gonna value. And then be mad when you thinking, well shit. Let's just get him just because he's fast. You think, well, yeah, we're going to get Xavier Worthy because he's there. And then you see them take Adonai Mitchell. You're just like, I don't want him. I wanted the faster guy. And it's like, there's a reason. Your team, your team doesn't value that. So what there's are we talking reason. about? Here? There's a reason why they do these things. I promise you. Exactly. So 
Yeah, yeah, especially the fans. The fans, the, as fans, y'all should definitely know what your team is good at and what your team is bad at. Like, don't That's... sit here like, like, okay. If I, if I, again, Cowboys fan, I know, hey, we want a crap ton of man coverage. I should be looking at every single man cover corner in this class if we decide to go corner. Ravens, you know, they run a little bit of a little mix, intricate mix of everything. You know, look at, you know, somebody that can do it all. Chargers, man, you know, they're coming in with a little bit of a different defense because they're coming from, uh, their DC came from Michigan. I forgot his name, but he's, you know, same That's DC a, from yeah. Michigan. Yeah, but he runs the same Will McDonald, or not Will McDonald. Is it not Will McDonald? What's his name? Mike McDonald. He's on, he runs the same system where it's a bunch of, you know, intricate, like, you know, little mix of coverages between man and zone, and they blitz a lot. It's aggressive. That, that, you be looking at that. Look at the defensive tackles. Look at the line that was at. You know, just look for that specific type of player that fits that scheme. Don't just hey, here's a safety that that literally can't cover in the nickel. When my guy, you know, I when my DC values my safety being able to play in the nickel. I'm just you know what I want him because he's a safety. No, no, it doesn't work that way. I thought. Don't worry about. And that's where a lot of people will say, like, certain players are reaches or whatever, when in reality, like, that's the most annoying thing ever. Because, yeah, I don't give a fuck if all of your mock draft simulators had Darius Davis as a sixth-round pick. In reality, he was a fourth-round pick. And, you know, you could maybe say, like, oh, I, you know, he went higher than expected, but it's pretty clear that he was supposed to go there because he was an all-pro player as a rookie. So it's like... You know what I mean? Like, there's definitely you. You have to consider secondary positions in in football, or, or especially fits. You know, like Darius Davis, a wide receiver, but he's a returner, really. That's why we drafted him in the fourth. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things that you really do. You have to consider what your team likes, what your team does, and what they do well. So. You know, and for, for Chargers fans, like, it's going to be a little bit of a different year, which we already have seen that. Um, but, like, we don't know how the draft is going to go because this is the first time that Hortiz has had a the, the driver's seat and Jim Harbaugh has been out of the NFL for a few years. So it's going to be uh, it's gonna be real interesting to see, like, how that plays out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot to go into. You can talk about pretty much anything regarding the draft. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, yeah, people... I just want people to get a better... At the end of the day, if you take nothing from this conversation, just get a better understanding for what you like. Get a better understanding for what the team you root for likes because that's how you're going to understand why these teams value them the way they value them. Yeah, to some of these teams, yeah, it's not a reach because they feel like they can do something with it. You know what I mean? And for some of these teams, the di- especially when it gets later on in the draft, the difference between 30 picks is not that big. That's the way they look at that. So those are the type of things that you guys should try to familiarize yourself with. Because at the end of the day, we're not the all-knowing ones. We don't know everything. We're still learning. But here's the thing. We're willing to learn. That's the point. And that's the point to everything. Still just be willing to learn. That's just a life lesson. In general. Oh, without a doubt. And then just to to your point. Okay. Let's go. One other thing that um, you know, you said take the take away um is to come in with knowledge and just be a little bit more understanding and just look around a little bit. Another thing is it's okay to be different. It's okay to have different rankings as long as you have a reason. As long as yeah, with sub yeah, like don't don't be different just for different sake. Like you know, if you have neighbors over uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., that's okay. Just say why. Like, what's your reason? And you know, it's all good. Like, so that's the other thing. Um, yeah, just just have reasons for why you have players certain places. Yeah, hey, it really be like that. Hey, yeah, like television. if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna make, you know, statements, you the best way to prove credibility is to build consistency. You know, 
the reason why we are growing as a department, you know, as far as our reach, as far as on YouTube, as far as we're about to start doing a Patreon on Twitter is because we are showing credibility. Like last year, you know, people are still watching the draft videos, you know, the little uh, podcast episodes we did last year. They're going back and they're watching them and then they're catching up and watching what we're doing now. So if you establish some credibility, then you you then can, you know, make those statements and they're received better. Now, that takes time and that takes hard work. But the main thing is, like Hayden and Dalen said, show your work. Like, it doesn't always have to be through film. I know we 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 thrive off film, but you could simply just have your notes together and you could just make a tweet. Or if you don't have any access to film, bro, for certain positions, you can use DV copy. It's okay. As long as long as you know what you're talking about, no one is going to care. As long as they have a visual aid or something seeing what you're the vision that you're trying to lay out. That's all that matters. Like it's it's not it's not it's not rocket science to evaluate football players. It's really not. And stop comparing these children who is in college to proven Hall of Fame players. I'm sick of it. <laughs> hey, no, that seems I'm like a little bit of it. shame. I really that seems like a little bit of shame. No, no. This at the end of the day, stop it, stop it. Stop that trying to like compare. That's a little bit of shade because my Marvin Harrison comp is coming out this week. That seems like a little bit of shade. It's, it's not. No, it's not because of you. I've seen worse. Trust me. If I if I feel like you were too I, nasty, I about, have like, too. The one, the <laughs> one, the one for that one. It's not that bad because I understand. It. And plus, it's still more towards the other guy because I don't want to spoil it. But it's still more towards the other guy, so I get it. But. Motherfuckers be coming through, be like, <laughs> Latu Latu? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I see Junior say, if you ask me, no, no, no. what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you going on about, man? <laughs> Let the kid be him. Yeah. Let him learn what he's going to be in the league. Let him be him. Let Caleb Williams be Caleb Williams. <laughs> Why does every quarterback come in? I think that's the question we got to end Patrick with. Mahomes. I think that's the question we got to end <laughs> with. What? What? What what is it what is it about comps from the media perspective that makes it like so difficult for people to be original? Like I've seen I've seen Marvin Harrison Jr. be called AJ Green at least eighty times. Like so why that- why why can't why can't why can't why can't people just come up with their own comps? Like and how well, do you guys feel about comps in general? Because I have, I have a very I have a very detailed opinion on it. I just uh, want to I'm gonna go. Comps. I'm gonna go real quick. Yeah. Uh, I, I've told already. I've never really been the biggest comp guy. It's something that's gonna always be difficult for me because I just, I just look at for what I see right now, and I'm just like, all right. The most I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll plug somebody's measurables in and compare it to somebody else. But even still, I won't be like, that's him. I just plug and be like, oh, who else had these uh, measurables? Because, you know, you forget. Yeah. The combine happens every year. You don't remember things off the top of your head. So you're just like, oh, oh, it's comparable to this. And you could you could kind of do that. I don't have an issue with it. But there's other ways to prove it besides just, you know, measurables. But I, I've never really been that big with comps because every player is their own player. I mean, yeah, there's similarities, of course, but I, I've just never really been big on them. No, I'm I'm very much on that same wave. And I, I think to answer your question, Artie, um, one of the things that uh, – one of the reasons why so many players get, like, comped to, like, oh, this is going to be, a, you know, Junior Seau or this is going to be A.J. Green or this is – is because, like, it is – I think it's kind of a media thing. And – I think that, you know, for the media, they're not going to pull out like some very obscure person. You know what I mean? They're going to pull out something that's going to get some, that has some wow factor. And so like saying something like, and, and granted, I think there is a way to do comps where it's like, okay, like I think if you say 
this player is the same size, like you said, is the same size as this player. And then he also wins in a similar way. That's how I would do comps. It's not, this is what I, this is who I think this player will be. Um, so that's, that's on that side of it. But I, yeah, I just think that too many people get out of hand with it. And then it's, it's so much easier to just say like, oh, this person is Aaron Donald because it's exciting and it gets more engagement. And, you know, goodness, exactly. Goodness, goodness. Yes, sir. Aaron Donald. I'm telling you. Short arm. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> y'all, remember, y'all remember when they were trying to call Kalaja Kansi Aaron Donald? Yeah. They like yes. just because they went to the past yeah. on him and shit. And I was like, yes. okay. And I'm just like, man, just. Y'all not even giving him a chance. Just let like, him play. These are unfair. Did he play like, Pete Aaron Donald? Exactly. Oh, ran a fast 44. A D lineman? Oh, he's not looking like it right now. And it's like, <laughs> and I think if you should have never been compared to him. Yeah, I think if you do comps correctly, you and you still shouldn't, but you still you can like make an argument like this player does this like Aaron Donald. This is how he wins. This is I see this in this tape. Like, I think you can do that. And I think it, it's yeah. just wrong to just outright say, this is this player. Like, he will be Aaron Donald. So, like, there's a yes. difference there. Yes, that is, that is that is probably the perfect way to do comps is you have to, hey, this person, you know, the way that they do this thing, it reminds me of this person. It's not just, hey, you're a short defensive tackle, but you're kind of bad at football, but you're a short defensive tackle, Aaron Donald. No, no, it's not how we're going to do things. It's not how we're going to do things. It exactly. needs to be... It needs to be some level of explanation, some level of substance. For example, I have a Malik Neighbors comp. My comp is Amari Cooper because I love the way he separates. I love the way he runs his rocks. It just reminds me of Amari Cooper. Is that saying he's going to be Amari Cooper? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. But I do like him a lot in comparison to Amari Cooper. Barres and Jr. Now, my comp is AJ Green. That's mine because, again, Big tall receiver, good body control, can kind of, you know, win and win in every single area of the field. It's just easy for me to do that. I'm not gonna comp him to fucking Randy Moss. I'm not doing it. Max, I refuse. I refuse. Yeah, you can't. Yes, I'm talking about you. I refuse. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Because Momo is the second greatest receiver I've seen in my life. Matter of fact, yes, he's the second greatest receiver I've seen in my life. He's the second greatest receiver overall in history, only behind Jerry Rice. That's what I'm saying. So, like, that's a lot of pressure to put on, on a dude who already has the name of a Hall of Famer, by the way. He already has the name of a Hall of Famer. I cannot put that additional pressure on him and say he's this. I can't do that then. So, I let cannot. me, so let me like rebuttal her. quickly. For me, let me rebuttal quickly. One, I, can't, I think a lot. Of, I, can't say, I, can't say, I can't say Nate Wiggins is Dora Revis because that's not true. That no. No, no. Yeah. Nate Wiggins is Dominic Rogers come on. So, and y'all are gonna like. <laughs> so for Yo, context to cool. what for context to what Daylon is saying, um, my Marvin Harrison, I'm just gonna go ahead and say because I don't give a fuck My Marvin Harrison Jr. cop is Randy Moss and Andre Johnson. And to Hayden's point, it's not necessarily that Marvin Harrison Jr. is Randy Moss and Andre Johnson combined. It's he has a similar play style and he has similar traits. Does he have every trait? No. Marvin Harrison wasn't gonna run a four two five. Um, no. He isn't just gonna explode off the line of scrimmage to run by anybody. But um you throw Marvin Harrison a fifty fifty ball and you tell me who he looks like. Because um there was a term growing up saying you got mossed, and that's all Marvin Harrison Jr. does. Same thing. Not of a higher clip than Robo Dunze. Not of a higher clip than Robo Dunze. Not of a higher clip than Robo Dunze. Yeah, yeah. You can say yeah. you can say yeah. whatever you want yeah. about Robo Dunze, but we're yeah. not talking about him right now. Yeah. I'm all I'm saying is, all yeah. I'm saying is, yeah. yeah. All I'm saying is, is that when it comes to the fifty-fifty ball thing, when it comes to the route running ability, for me, and when it comes to the ball tracking, for me, those are some of the traits I see. Marvin Harrison Jr. was a very hard comp for me. There aren't many players at 6'4 that are able to run routes like that and still catch the ball over the top. So, I mean, 
that might be an I mean, outrageous comp to you guys, but at the end, at the end, at the end of the day, I just explained it. Some nigga on Twitter, they're gonna tell you the comps running wants, and they're not gonna say half of the shit I said. So, which is true. That's yeah, exactly which what is true. Back to. You can true. you can have your own opinions. Just 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 yeah. give me a reason. Just give me a reason why. Have That's substance, anything. Please. Anything. Just anything. Yeah, anything. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, I'm honestly very glad you did that, Dylan. That was the perfect example of how to defend yourself. Yeah, the perfect example. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's perfect. Because, because, like, yeah, I don't like comps, but yeah, you, you broke it down. Right. I, 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 I can see. I see. Yeah, see why I see the vision. That. I see the vision. I mean, hey. As long as you have a reason, I don't. I personally don't really care all that much. I'm not a fan. I mean. Respect to AJ Green, though, because, you know, I used to say you got greened, but mm. okay, sure. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think that. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even I know what I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm going to say. <laughs> 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 Let's you got green. You got green. You, you get that's like saying, um, That's like saying... That's like saying somebody <laughs> shot a shot to the trash kid. It was like Westbrook. Like that's no <laughs> way you said that. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, what agent? Oh, man, nah, Ooh, that's bro, that's, that's so hilarious. fucking funny. Like, like like we alluded to earlier, man. Next week we're gonna have a preview. Uh, well, not a preview. We're gonna be talking about our big board top one hundred. Yeah, we're gonna talk about why Game Love is not in the top one hundred. Oh God! One Shitty booty ass nigga. <laughs> so, like, yeah, he like first when he goes first overall, bust like Johnny. <laughs> Simple. Uh, <laughs> but nasty um, word. Yeah, we go. We go talk about our top one hundred, and then uh, we're also gonna talk about our top tens uh, by position. We 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 splitting it up, or are we still just doing for top now? Tens? There's something oh. to change. So we're so change, we possibly we possibly yeah. might split them up. We'll keep you guys in tune. You know what I mean? We'll figure it out. Uh, in tune. Side note. Uh, sneak peek. Yeah, Trice made it on my list, guys. Mm-hmm. He made it on my list. I've got a, I got a couple of spicy takes, but I, I have reason behind them, so I'm, I'm, I'm all there. Exactly. Stand on business. That's all that matters. I don't I mean, have any really that. spicy takes besides besides my wide receiver. My wide receiver list might cost me a bunch of prize, but... I have the really spicy takes. None of the my takes are wrong. Are basically like set in stone. None of my takes are wrong. I'm like LeBron James when evaluating BBs. I do not miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? So where's Marcellus Dow going? Why is he not in your top 10? Oh, yeah. But, uh, uh, in the I don't want to have a LeBron debate right now. All <laughs> yeah. right. He's better than that loser, oh, MJ. Man. We done with the 90s. We're done with the 90s, Unc. We're done with the 90s. <laughs> Where's his left hand? <laughs> We're done with the 90s. <laughs> that, the, 90s the 90s was the oh, golden God, era for everything. Man. Those are the most disgusting. All right, all right, all right, pal. All right, all right. We were just joking, but get off of your knees. Good <laughs> Lord, nigga. The golden era for everything? I was what never going to off my knees now? for the 90s, okay? What year were you born? 1999. 1999. Oh, Amber, you weren't even a part of it. Crazy. Have some shame. 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 How dare you?